Hey Spartans, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do an in-depth breakdown of everything that you need to know for the upcoming winter update which launches tomorrow, November 8th. If you want to skip ahead, timestamps are below. Now let's hop right into it. To start off, we have the winter update maps and mode revealed for the update. First map we are getting is Argyle. Set within the narrow corridors of a UNSC vessel, Argyle comes to Halo Infinite as one of the first multiplayer maps to be built entirely within Forge. It's a tight, indoor, symmetrical map, and it makes for a competitive arena environment that showcases merely a fraction of what the Forge tool is capable of. And we will be talking more about Forge here in just a moment. The next map we're going to be going into is Detachment. Also built entirely within Forge, Detachment comes to Halo Infinite as an all-new symmetrical arena map. This once-abandoned UNSC research facility is composed of indoor and outdoor environments, providing opportunities for dynamic combat that suits a variety of game modes and play styles, which also features the first teleporter in Halo Infinite multiplayer. Next, we have the new game mode that is coming with this update, which is Covert One Flag. It joins Halo Infinite as a unique variant of One Flag Capture the Flag. In this round-based mode, attackers and defenders swap sides as they battle for control of a single flag. Asymmetric team loadouts equip attackers with active camo to help sneak their way past enemy defenses, while defenders possess threat sensors to help spot the intruders. The team who wins the majority of these rounds wins the match. Super cool stuff, cannot wait to try this mode out. Next we have the sandbox balance updates revealed for the winter update. There are a lot of details within this blog post that 343 made for these weapon and sandbox changes. So we're going to go over only the more important ones. If you want to check these out for yourself, I'll put the link in the description. For starters, the plasma pistol is going to get an increase in base damage, not the charge shot, so that it's more viable on its normal fire mode. Charge shot is going to be getting a lot more aggressive tracking, so you'll be hitting more charge shots, which is going to feel very nice. Next is the pulse carbine. The Pulse Carbine is getting both a buff and a nerf. They are nerfing its long range capabilities. However, they are increasing its tracking aggressively at short to mid ranges. That way it feels a lot more viable in 4v4 scenarios. Next is the Commando. The Commando is getting a pretty decent buff. They are increasing headshot prioritization, bullet magnetism, and aim assist. So the Commando is going to become a much more viable precision weapon. Next, the Battle Rifle is actually getting overall nerfs. They are reducing headshot prioritization, reducing bullet magnetism, reducing bullet magnetism range, and magnetism falloff range. So I have a feeling that the Commando may outshine the BR in certain scenarios, which I'm super excited and interested to see. The Frag Grenade. The detonation timer is being increased by 0.2 seconds, so you really have to plan out throwing your frag grenades. Next, they go into snap sliding, which is a movement trick that currently exists within the game, which was actually a physics bug. They have since removed this bug for the winter update, so that will no longer exist within the game. Next, the disruptor is getting a very minor buff. It's going to help it a lot. They are increasing the magazine ammo count from 10 to 12. For PC players, they are actually adding Red Reticle on PC, thank goodness. At least on the Halo community, Red Reticle on PC has been the number one ask, and seeing that being fulfilled is absolutely fantastic. They had this to say about it. While turning this on for PC does open the game up to new cheating vectors, we want to enable this and better support our PC players. If a plethora of cheats pop up because of this, we may need to reconsider. But until then, we're excited to see how this feels for PC players. Surprisingly enough, 343 is also introducing network desync improvements with this update. Thank goodness. They aren't doing a lot. They have addressed so far the specific issues that they are trying to fix within the next few updates, including the winter update, which is desync, which is what we refer to when the server says you're in one place on the map, while we are actually in a different spot on the map on our side. 
blank shots, so you fire shots at a player, you see them connect, but the bullets deal no damage, getting shot around walls and corners, and ghost melees. They're going to be addressing all of those within the next few updates, starting with the winter update. The winter update is going to be introducing a vehicle desync fix, so for everyone who has dealt with a scenario where you're driving in a warthog, you get out of the warthog, all of a sudden you get teleported to a different spot on the map because that's where the server thinks you are, that should be fixed, or at least improved upon in this update. Next, and the big topic is going to be the Winter Update Forge Beta. What's awesome about this Forge Beta is that 343 actually created a FAQ page that goes into detail about what Forge is, what can you make, what all can you do with this Forge Beta when it launches, etc. For starters, Forge is launching with six brand new canvases. They are going to be double the size of the Halo 5 Forge canvases, which is super exciting. The first Forge canvas we are getting is going to be Arid. Arid is going to be a widespread desert plain that takes place on the Halo ring. Looks very nice. The next Forge canvas is going to be Ecliptic, which is going to take place in outer space. It's going to be an awesome space canvas for Forgers. The third Forge canvas is going to be Institute, which actually takes place on the same area that live fire exists in. You can actually see live fire map in the background of this canvas, which is very cool, very fun. We love the theme of that. The next canvas is going to be Myers, which is going to be very similar to the last one. It's going to be more of a wetland type canvas, going to incorporate water elements, very swamp-like texture. It looks very nice, very fun for Forge. The next map is going to be Seafloor, which is going to be very similar to the underwater canvas that existed within Halo 5. This is going to be awesome for those underwater type game modes that you've seen in Halo 5, a lot of related mini games. That's going to be very cool to see return. Last but not least, we are getting Void, which is, as 343 has put it, literally a blank canvas. It is entirely blank. The only thing that's in this is some stars and the, a sun for lighting. Other than that, it is completely blank and you can do whatever you want with this canvas. Now, in terms of what you can do that is new in Forge, a lot of new features which include much anticipated undo redo buttons, object scaling, you can also script. There is now an advanced scripting tool within Forge, and with that you can do things like script bots using what's called NavMesh. There is new lighting and audio, and they're also reintroducing file sharing. Now 343 has also made a YouTube series called Forge Fundamentals on YouTube that goes into detail on all of these different new tools that you can use on Forge on November 8th. With Forge out of the way, we can now talk about the next thing coming with the winter update, which is going to be co-op campaign and mission replay. This is super exciting and amazing stuff. I am so happy that it's finally here. While yes, it should have been at launch, however, I am super excited for the features that come with it. Mission replay, you can go back into any existing save you have currently within the campaign you can go back and play those missions to grab maybe some collectibles you missed or a spartan core that may be locked in a certain area that kind of thing can now be achieved and with co-op campaign you can now play up to four players on network co-op super exciting stuff i cannot wait to hop in this with my friends and last but certainly not least is the Battle Pass preview for the Winter Update alongside the Match XP Beta. Now the Winter Update is going to drop with a free 30 tier pass that contains unreleased Halo Reach cosmetics for your Mark 5B armor core. The Battle Pass does not expire which is absolutely fantastic very similar to season one and season two it's getting that same non-retirable treatment 
Now with the match XP beta, that is going to be your primary system of leveling up through the battle pass. Before, the best way to get XP was doing ch various different challenges, daily challenges, all of that kind of stuff that players weren't too keen on. Now, your primary way of earning XP is going to be playing matches, and it's also based off of your performance in your matches. So you get extra points for being MVP of the match, or bonus for being winning team on that match. So all of those factors are going to come together to provide that XP for you. Challenges are now going to be primarily used for unlocking that weekly ultimate reward. On top of that, also, they have reduced the amount of weekly challenges by half. So instead of doing 20 challenges each week, they have reduced that by half to 10 challenges. So that definitely reduces that grind by so much, and it's going to help a lot in the long run. And that is going to wrap up everything that you absolutely need to know for this upcoming Halo Infinite Winter update. If there's anything important that I may or may not have missed regarding this update, feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a like, comment, subscribe. Otherwise, have a great day, Spartans, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Winter Update.